Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From New York, it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex, and we'll be here till midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Lori Thompson. She's in Florida. I feel like I'm at a cotillion, like my, you know, coming out, or whatever you call those, those debut things that the society girls do. You know what's interesting about Lori, for as long as I've known her, she hasn't been married. Uh, right. You know, I'm sure you had long-term relationships and things like that. But what is a marriage but a long-term relationship with a piece of paper? Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, I mean, I've had a couple. I had one long-term relationship, eleven years. You remember the girlfriend I had for for a long time? Oh yeah. Time. Uh, on and off, she I kept breaking up with her. She kept breaking up with me over and over again, eleven times in eleven years. Okay, um, I didn't know how long. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, she yeah she was a good one. She all your all your well, gals she was she was kids. a sweet kid. You know, I say kid because compared to me, she was a kid. I started <laughs> going with her when she was eighteen, and I think I was thirty. All right. So. Yeah, and that doesn't seem like a big gap. Or thirty-three. Yeah. It, well, yeah. It. it it, I didn't take it as a gap, you know. I just enjoyed it. But uh-huh. anyway, uh, now what was the point I was going to make? Why did you I? You were talking about up? I was. You were unmarried most of the time. Oh yeah, yeah. I so that was a case married. where for eleven years, I mean, I have to almost say we were married. Yeah. You know. Because yeah, when you're in one of those breakup and then break, yeah. unbreakup, I was in one of those for several years from the ages of sixteen to 22 to 21 oh, okay. and it finally came time for the big you know virginity night and i knew, and i had i was away at college and i was dating guys who were very you know i was occasionally going on dates and guys were very aggressive mm-hmm. and i didn't want it to happen well, how old were you how old were you when you first lost your virginity 21 wow yeah, yeah. and i had to i was to i was eight i was 18 which, yeah, for so a guy, that's relatively, you know, we're, later. We, were, we were late. We were late. Yeah, yeah. And this was a guy I had been uh, seeing off and on at Bible quiz tournaments. Um, Bible quiz tournaments. Oh my! Oh, Bible God. quiz was great. Axel Rose was in Bible quiz in Indiana, and they was you studied a given book of the Bible, New Testament, for uh, that year, and then every month you would go and play different churches with quiz teams. It was great. It taught memorization. It taught text. Yeah, but it you were also everything. being taught myths. Y- yeah, y- you, know. you know, I know. And my dad, see, had a great attitude. He said, some of these, you know, you might want to look at as metaphors. He never told me what Well, to I always, always said, you know, if you want to look at the Bible, well, to begin with, the Old Testament are a bunch of stories. Yes. You know, and each story has a moral. So mm-hmm. it's really a book of fables. And, uh, you know, most of the time you can take that stuff for what it is because it has a message at the end. Yes. You know, and, uh, and it does not purport to be the history of mankind. When Finally, when you get to the New Testament, that's all history. You know, it's, you mean, it's history. Yeah. It's Christ, yeah. it's the apostles, all those people, the history of how they came. It's all historical. So as opposed to the First Testament, which are fables, and they, you know, they probably handed down from campfire to campfire over history uh, to, mm-hmm. to give a, a, you know, a, a moral, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. the, the New Testament didn't have any morals. The te- New Testament was simply telling stories about history and purporting to be history. So that's where I consider it false. Well, I consider it, my father was very good about, like I say, not telling us what to think or how to think, but he said you might consider. And so metaphor is, I just take most of the New Testament as valuable metaphor, you know, and the Christ figure himself, 
Um, he was, you know, he walked in the flesh. My dad had theories about Jesus that he had a wife, and you know, and he had sexual dalliances. And, um, and they he were, probably cheated he, on that wife. Yeah, <laughs> he's a guy. They, he cheated on that wife. He was a guy. Well, and the principle of Jesus is emphasizing the spirit over the flesh. That's that I understand. And so everything, when I'm thinking of doing something, I think, what are the consequences to me and those I love? in doing this or saying this. And that's a pretty good guiding principle to grow up with because you think about other people, it trains you in empathy. And I think yeah. empathy is our like uh, our a, yeah, most I, well, diligent duty and biggest privilege. It, you know, if you use the Bible to as a moral guide, mm -hmm. uh, the, the morals aren't that terrible, you know? No, uh, no. Uh, uh, Love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, I mean, things like that, you know? Uh, and so there it's fine. It's just terrible when people use it as a justification to be evil. See, that's it. That is where they're, they're obviously so missing the boat. And it's so easy to spot if you know the true morality. If you've seen, it's almost like an epiphany that you have where you see this is what it's all about. Spirit over flesh. Transcendence. By the way, oh, it, it's an old joke, and I think uh, it was either Bill Hicks who said this, or I think <laughs> it Hicks. might have been Lenny Bruce, actually. Um, and it was that when if Christ came back to earth right now, and he mm -hmm. met up with all these good Christians who wore crosses around their neck, he'd be horrified <laughs> because that's how he was crucified. That's right, the, exactly. That's the method of then death. The memory. Yeah, you know, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get that out of here! But yet this cross, yeah. uh, this cross has become a symbol, and I can't understand why. I mean, if Christ had died in the electric chair, would we have a little electric chair pendants we we're wearing around our neck, you know? <laughs> that would be interesting. Well, there was uh, there was one point of view that um, it, the, the the cross is a symbol of sacrifice. Um, the sacrifice, someone apparently had to die for sins. I've never understood that punitive approach to He life died anyway. for your sins, yeah. Yeah, he died for my sins. I wasn't even born. Hey, you know what you do you is know. you go out, you have sex with somebody, and afterwards you say, hey, listen, I don't feel guilty. Somebody died for this. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. JC, am I right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 but, yeah. But yeah, the, the lessons of empathy, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, and peace, patience, uh, gentleness, goodness, and faith, and then uh, meekness, which I have changed to consideration and temperance. Those are the fruit of the Spirit as prescribed. Not bad general principles. Would you say you're still religious at all because of all that upbringing? I don't know. I'm not religious, although, oh, we go to this kick-ass church with this female black minister who is so passionate about the word she I mean she can quote huge portions of scripture and she gets so excited um, she it's just a, a blessing to be in her presence when she's so passionate well about I mean it, 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 blacks are very joyous about their religion I mean you go to a black church and it's all boom 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 da, boo, da, ba, you know and but yeah. then, you, then you go to a white church and everybody oh da, 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 da. yeah 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 so that, but she's man she's all that but do i back to your question do i don't think of myself as a religious person i think of myself as a much more deeply spiritual person than i was raised with you know of course everybody says that's a cop out you know it's interesting we have two churches uh, in within a on this block, one halfway down the block, and then the one over here, which used to be a movie theater. In fact, it was the first movie palace in America. Really? Yeah, and it was taken over by a a church, or, or some guy, some hustler, you know, who, uh, you know. And these churches on Sunday, tourists bus up to Harlem to go to these churches. Oh, I can believe it. And to watch the the music and the uh, you know the whole. The whole thing of it, Spectacle. and and they yeah. made a rule that once the services started, they close the doors and you cannot leave. And the reason because you can't leave is that everybody was showing up, watching two or three songs, and then leaving. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. said you got to stay for the service. You got to be it's here to listen to like the a, sermon. Yeah. Well, it's a sheep field trip. But I know, wake for, up on Sunday many times hearing music coming from the, one of the churches down the street. Yeah. 
that would yeah. be a blast because I found a really great assembly of God, which is what I was raised in Key West. Mm -hmm. I, I rode my bike to the church, which was a little thing, just a, and I walked in, and the woman walking in front of me was barefoot, and I said, "This is my kind of church." You know, the last time was, it's interesting. The last time we did this, we talked uh -huh. about you having a miscarriage in the bathroom at Live One Hundred and Five. Right. And this time yeah. we're talking about your religious life. This is... <laughs> you know. But we're all such walking conundrums. And uh, that's a good basis. I'm so glad I was raised the way I was raised. It seems stifling at the time. Mm -hmm. Because when I was raised Assembly of God, couldn't go to movies, couldn't go to dances. And my parents loosened up on that. So well, I'm glad my dad balanced yeah. out my mother's extreme zealotry. The thing I liked about Judaism and being Jewish, uh, and, and I'm happy to be a Jew for this reason, there's no pressure on you for anything. That would you, be nice. You know, I mean, if I never went to another synagogue again, I would still be Jewish. Whereas if yeah. I were a Catholic, I'd probably be not a Catholic anymore. Right, they demand a lot from the, you. I yeah, uh, the 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 level of failure as a Catholic is very high. The level of failure as a Jew is very low. Yeah, that's a great that's a a, a great approach. Yeah. So but I, speaking of yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. No, well, I was going to yeah. say. So I, you know, I never had the feeling that I was obligated to do anything. The only thing my parents did with me is they had me bar mitzvah. Yeah. yeah I went well, then you get presents and envelopes with cash. Well, yeah, to, well, the joke was to, uh, the, it's, you're supposed to say, today I am a man, because what it is, it's at 13, it's the passage of you going from being a, a child to a man. And mm -hmm. now you're a man in the eyes of, of Judaism. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, uh, the, but the, the term was, today I am a man. And a lot of people said, uh, you know, with all the presents and everything, today I am a fountain pen. You know, ah. <laughs> you, got, you got all these fountain pens. I had more fountain pens than I knew what to do with, you know. Really? That's it, funny. Well, I'm saying fountain pen because who uses a fountain pen anymore? Exactly. I no, can't I'm even, not. you know, we were talking about getting older and things that get worse. It'll happen to you. I can't write my name anymore, my full name. Really? Well, that, we I get the Bennett part. I get the Bennett part. And then when I get to the Schwarzman, it kind of peters out about around the Z. Well, you're not as accustomed to signing Schwarzman because, you know, when you were, uh, every time I knew you, people would uh, know you as Alex Bennett. Yeah. And so that would make, that would make Alex a little... Alex Bennett, yeah, it's still pretty tough. You know, I, so, mm -hmm. I can't write as well as I used to because I have a little arthritis in this hand. And, uh, I, I, you know, but it, you're, you fall apart. You really do. You start, you start, I start, I, I wake up in the morning and, it, and I have to think about getting out of bed. I have to think about when I'm sitting on the edge of the bed of getting up and walking, you know. Well, yeah, well, there is a little bit of, what do they call it, sciatica. <laughs> my paramour and I were trying to, now my husband, we were, we had That's nice uh, you call him your paramour. I think that's wonderful. I, yeah. yeah. And we had uh, trouble with our floor, water, a water pipe broke. Yeah. And we were, it was coming up through the floor. Mm -hmm. So we had to have the floor replaced. This is like, you know, a day after we bought the house. No, but it wasn't long. It wasn't long yeah. after we bought it. And so when they came and fixed it all, they didn't move the stove back enough. So if you're married to someone with the OCD, you, that stove, before That's... you sleep tonight, has to be flush with the counters. So we thought, well, well, we can do that. So we had the brilliant idea, sitting back to back, I pushed my feet against the cabinets. He pushed his feet against the stove. And we just said, okay, go. And I didn't say stop enough to where, right right after I, I heard my back do something, my lower back. Oh, boy. And, and yeah. it was, and yeah. I said, stop. But he didn't register it for another few seconds. And that was the, the crux time. Because now when I... It's so weird. I don't know if it's the sciatica so many people speak of because I keep thinking it will go away. But it's... It doesn't it's, go away. It doesn't go away. It shoots pains all the way down your leg. So another thing that I have to look forward to more of that, I guess, mm -hmm. unless I go to a Cairo. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah uh, but speaking of Catholicism, we were one a uh, moment ago, um, how ironic that this O pill, the over-the-counter birth control pill, yeah. is from a company in Ireland. 
you know, which is uh, the, the chastity spot of the global world. Yeah. And supposedly. And uh, yeah, I thought that that was interesting. And talk about something that is quickly going to be the most shoplifted item at CVS. Look for the opil. You won't find them. They're all shoplifted. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, they they have everything behind a, a glass at my. Uh, they uh, they do. Uh, CBS uh, you know, Walgreens. Their drugstore. Yeah. yeah, mine's a, mine's a Rite Aid. No, Rite Aid. Yeah, Rite Aid. Oh up, wow, up we used to have Rite Aid. Well, we have a CBS but, on the corner, and then we go to Walgreens. Uh, there's a thing called Walgreens Community. It's just a pharmacy. Oh and, wow, yeah, that's good. And and uh, that's where we go a lot of times. I buy most of my drugs now from Costco without my, oh, yeah. with, uh, without my insurance and it's just as cheap without my insurance as it is with the insurance in fact it's at cheap Costco. at Costco if I tell them to use my insurance I have to make up on a you know something like four hundred ninety five dollars before they start paying all right Whoa. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah so I found out that I could go to Costco uh, mail order and get my drugs, and they were as cheap, if not cheaper, than it would be at Walgreens. Yeah, and all you have to do is mail them your, show them a copy. There was of one pill I was taking, and it was for ninety because they do three months, one hundred and twenty-five dollars at Walgreens, at Costco fifteen bucks. Wow. Yeah. Well, we we don't have in beautiful uh, Panhandle, Florida. Uh, they have some Costcos, but not in our town. Um, we have. Do you think they? I wonder if they do the same. Well, if you belong to Costco, you can do it by mail order. They have mail order for the. They have a mail order pharmacy. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would be now. Would be what it's doing. not good for is like you know, a couple of months ago when I had COVID, I had to have Paxlovid, which is this pill that you know kills it. Oh. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't wait for ten days for it to come from Costco. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to have it. So I go to my Walgreens community where I also have my regular insurance and mm -hmm. uh, did it there, you know, because yeah. I need that for immediate stuff. So, you know. Does Paxlovid work because well, it's advertised? Although, on you, if you do have a Costco nearby, you can go to the pharmacy there and get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, Costco's, everybody's clamoring for a Costco down here. We are getting an Aldi, but I don't think Aldi has a pharmacy. No, I have. Yeah, there's nothing, and then there's, like, there's nothing like the Costco. battle between Sam's Club yeah. and Costco. I mean, Marjorie yeah. and I were thinking of adopting children, and uh, we figured we'd go to Costco because they have an adoption center, and what they do is they <laughs> give you two kids taped together. <laughs> I thought you were serious. It was like, you two as parents, I can see that working. Yeah. See, yeah. I have a theory that people, um, you know, age 60 and over make that grandparents is a great role they make good parents in fact yeah. and, you know jerry brown had that theory i've quoted many times about people who are raised around their grandparents he didn't say by their grandparents but around their grandparents have a greater calm and a greater grace because gentility skips a generation <laughs> well I, I i know a lot of grandparents now and i said uh -huh. the great thing about being a grandparent is that you don't have to raise those kids. Exactly. You, you know, you can go They're over, you can dote on them, you can love them, you can shower them with love and affection, and then you go home. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's the advantage of being a grandparent. Well, and you have, you know, 20 to 30 more years of life than your children who've had these children. So I like that about the grandparents thing, because we lived across when I was growing up yeah. from my grandparents. And I love my grandma Pansy. She was just, she wasn't even my biological yeah. grandma. But she was the only one I ever knew. Yeah. And uh, she replaced the one who took her life. And uh, she was awesome. I mean, she was the prototypic. Yeah. I love how when people can step into a role. Yeah. She had no children of her own, but we were her family. You just used so the word big. prototypic, which is a very sophisticated word to you. Yeah. And I'm I actually am amazed by you because you're like me. You you kind of feel you're a receptacle of the English language, and you're the disseminator. Oh, you're the disseminator of the English language, and you have to do it properly. Yes. You know, and there's something. For instance, this drives me crazy. You're going to love this. All these people on television 
who say we broadcasted this program. We are kid- I I'm hearing seen the that. word broadcasted a lot, and I yell at the screen, it's oh. broadcast. Yeah. I, we it's, broadcast it's, this program. You don't say yeah. broadcasted. The only thing no. that you add to it is you go broadcasting, which is the business of broadcasting. Exactly. You know, that, uh, uh, yeah, I, I have a few peccadillos, word peccadillos, and when they are violated on TV, you cannot help but scream. And so I'm always also on the lookout for words that I may be mispronouncing, because growing up, I had a large reading vocabulary, but some words, like, I never... I'll, I'll tell you one my father was crazy about, and it drove me crazy now whenever I hear it. When somebody says, revert back, no, no, that means your your original position. It's a it's <laughs> yeah. redundant. It's saying I'm yeah. I'm, I'm I'm back back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reverting is going back in and of itself. So yeah. you don't say revert back. I just I reverted or I revert to blah blah blah. Yeah, and there are so many redundancies yeah. in common conversation. But I love to hear the fact that you're so good with the English language. You know, we're oh, probably the last ones. I hear broadcasters screwing up the English language all the time. And, and I it, wonder it, if it's because they don't write. See, I love that, you know, I wrote. I mean, sometimes it was paraphrasing the Chronicle. But, um, I, you know, I wrote the newscast because even if it didn't say what I wanted it, to, you know, what I intended to say, I knew what I intended to say. And you learn to correct it on the fly, which is a good quality. Yeah, I mean, a good yeah. But I mean, I often felt that I was the last uh, harbinger and the receptacle of the English language, and that if I'm going to be on the radio, I better speak it well. Yes. You know, I better and enunciate and know the language and not uh, butcher the language. Most exactly. people now in radio don't give a damn. In fact, I want to ask you something quickly, okay? Because yes. we're kind of running out of time. I'm a member of SAG-AFTRA. I don't know if you are, but oh, I am. Um, no, I had a chance to join, and I didn't. But but it's the it's it SAG-AFTRA really pisses me off because, because they just care about being a movie union. They don't care about being a broadcast union. You know, because I was a member of AFTRA at my first job at CBS in St. Louis, and then we were uh, Live 105 was a non-union shop, right. so I just kind of yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, but but, but they do, they, it, that is their priority. Isn't it, it? Yeah, but I mean, what happens is, is this strike right now? It's not an after strike; it's a SAG, it's a SAG strike. strike. And, yeah, and the head of the union is a was probably never never a member of AFTRA. She's a member of SAG, mm-hmm. and so all they mm-hmm. care about is what happens with SAG. Now they say the reason why the AFTRA side isn't going on strike is because. Uh, is because uh, there uh, the, the the union contracts are not expiring for AFTRA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So AFTRA is not on strike. Well, what happens when they do come up? Are they going to go on strike? And you, people say, well, what do they have to strike for? I'll tell you. This woman you're looking at right here is the example I always give about it. When you were working at uh, at, at uh, what was. Now it's iHeart. It was uh, uh, oh, Star One One Three. Clear, Clear Channel. Yes. Uh, you you did programs, but you just recorded the stuff that went between the music. Yeah, the you, tracks. You yeah you tracking tracking, right? Yeah. How long did it take you to? You had a there was a six hour shift they put up on the weekends with you on it. Oh yeah, Some, it, maybe eight it, hours. It, Something like that. How long did yeah. it take you every week to do the tracking on that? You could do it in an hour. Okay, in an know? hour. I usually said you said you could do it in an hour and a half. How much did yeah. you get paid for? Hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. See? And, they got and, and, and it, has this union done anything about that? Not a thing. And do you think they're, so, and you think they're going to complain about it? And you want to talk about AI? Come on, this is the early version of AI. Yeah, exactly. And then when you go to smaller stations, like I say in uh, Key West, and it was a great broadcast, little broadcast company, Holiday Broadcasting. But they were, um, I was tracking two stations 
and live on a third, mm -hmm. the top 40 station, which I love because it's current. It's but fun. at least you got paid and, for being in the studio for the six, uh, four hours you were there. Right? Yeah, and that's why I got to the point where I could do the others when I was on the air live. Without much, I didn't want to any erosion of quality on the air live. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to do that until, you know, I have, I figured out the rhythm of the live show. And then I was able to do, uh, you know, yeah, two but, other but, shows. You know, these are stations. kind of issues which this union is not dealing with. But we're running out of time. Oh, darn it. But can I say screw uh, Fran Drescher? Yeah, screw Fran Drescher. <laughs> Yeah, you know, she took away my she took away my insurance. Okay, so did she? She did and away with insurance for all the seniors. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, it affected it, it, it affect, basically it affected seniors, and the oldest guy in the union was uh, Norman Lloyd. Uh, he was the guy that fell off the uh, Statue of Liberty in Hitchcock's pictures, sabotage. Oh, yeah. okay. Sab yeah, saboteur, sabotage, saboteur. Yeah, well, anyway, because he did two things, two different pictures. Uh, and um, he, uh, he, he was an actor for years, produced all the Alfred Hitchcock Presents and so on, was 105 years old and lost his medical insurance. See, what did she argue? He's covered by it, Medicare? Huh? No. What, it, what did she argue? What, what, no, with Medicare, all he had to take care of was Medicare supplement, that 20% oh, that Medicare oh. doesn't pay for. And they, now they don't. And, and we pay $2,000 a year for that, which if you think about it, isn't much for two people, for Marjorie yeah. and I, and we got pretty good coverage. And all of a sudden, one day they say, oh, we're not going to do this anymore. That's ridiculous. I mean, that, I, I'm surprised that wasn't publicized more. Oh, well, because. it was. It was. And Ed Asner was still alive at the time. We're running over, but the hell with it. She's more interesting <laughs> than anything. Uh, uh, Ed Asner, you. who was the president of the union at one time, but wasn't at this time, decided to, because he lost his insurance too, decided sure. to sue the union and, and do it as a class action suit. And then he died, but the suit kept going. And so well, we just cool. got a resolution and I got a letter that said, congratulations as a member of After the Seniors, a settlement has been reached, and you're going to get four hundred dollars. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, I am a plaintiff. I didn't even know in a suit being brought against another broadcast group I worked with, another group of great people in Des Moines, Iowa, actually Urbandale. But uh, I, I don't know what it's for. I don't know what it's about. But I may be a beneficiary. Good for you. So, Hey, yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, so, you, when when you going on vacation? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, and she'll be gone for two We're... two weeks, right? Yeah, Venice so, and then Croatia. So we can set this up for another two weeks from now, I guess. Sure. Yeah, yeah. we can do it. We yeah. can do that. And, we can do that. And also, at that time, I want to talk about places to go because you're the traveler now. Anyway, uh -oh. hey, listen, we wait, run way over. I love you, dear. The, these are just this is love the baby. best part of my week. Okay. Back at you. You and Bubbles. You and Bubbles are the yeah. best part of my week. Bubbles. And I put you two together. The only problem is he doesn't have. He only has dial-up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and he doesn't know how to run Zoom or do anything like that. So. Could he go go over to one of his comedian uh, tech savvy friends? I told him he could do that, but you know. But I, I'd be, love to put them on here, on here with you sometime, but I have, have, want to have video, not just do audio, so. Yeah, well, and uh, also, um, <laughs> Bob's, I think about, I even wrote during COVID, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it was at the tail end of COVID, a piece for uh, uh, Bob Emmett, or, you know, and his wife, about his wife, Frenchie, who started buying uh, insurance salvage boxcars full of insurance salvage on the railroad yeah. and set up this eBay store and made like millions. And so she had kind of taken Bubs, or Bobby Bitter back as her boy. Tonight. Bobby Bitter and, was an alter ego that the Bubs had. I'm going to talk to Bubs later today. I got to bring up Bobby Bitter. Uh, yeah, because he, he and Larry Stahl still keep in touch. Yeah. And I keep in touch with Larry too. Yeah. So, yeah, hey, well, listen. We, I, I love you dearly. Have a nice vacation. 
And we'll t- stick um, around. We'll talk right after we're through here. That's uh, Lori Thompson, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. There's right. nobody better in this whole world that I could have had as a <laughs> secondary fun person. You were so sweet. <laughs> well, we were married. You know, let's face it. Let's be honest. Our relationship lasted longer than most of our marriages have. So <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you later, sweetie. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. We love Lori, and uh, we love having her on. And we'll have her on in a couple more weeks from now. When she gets back from vacation to Croatia, okay, um, listen, there's only one person waiting to come on right now. And uh, I, I, that's disappointing. That's very disappointing. Um, hmm. I guess there are too many people who go, oh, he, gee, he must be running something. I don't have to call now, you know. And then they don't call at all. So I don't know. Uh, well, let's uh, let's uh, let's go to this uh, pr- one person who's there, and uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, what he if he if he actually um uh, uh, let's see if he can connect now are you ready to connect there he is are you there yep he, what do you know he did it he did it no problems tonight at all but what wait a minute you just you just you just uh, you just uh, muted yourself unmute yourself Asked to unmute. There we go. There you go. Okay, you're the only person I have here. All right, let's go home. Yeah, yeah, let's go home. You know, to hell with it, you know. How's, how is your weather for you? Well, today it was 95, which, you know, compared to other parts of the country is pretty cool. <laughs> you know, how was it up where you were? Well, it was real kind of, it, it rained a little bit, but everybody said, don't go outside because it's very foggy with weird, dangerous stuff. And the other thing is they said, don't drink your own water. Don't drink your own water? Yeah. What do you mean, don't drink your own water? I mean, urine? I mean, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, from the normal... Water, we did. Why? Yeah. Why? Because all, well, we, we live in one area, mm-hmm. and all the water comes through one system. And apparently it's getting a little crappy. And why is it getting? Bacteria. Huh? It's got bacteria. Really? Yeah. From from the heat? Or just, it, it's they, all would, the, they would have said that anyway. <clears throat> yeah, but. I, I think it's because a lot of the stuff around here kept taking all the water down yeah. and it was washing everything. It was draining everything. Yeah. And cleaning everything. And unfortunately, it was going in the water yeah. where you would drink it. Yeah. Well, I wonder about that because I, um, um, here in New York, I don't, I don't drink water from the tap. Never do. Uh, although I hear New York City water is supposed to be damn good. It was. It's supposed to be, or was at least at one time, yeah. the best in the country, I think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But I just don't, I don't like taking water from the tap to drink. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of these guys. You know, I do, uh, this is what I do. I do ice, which is seltzer, which is really water with zero, zero sugar in it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, you know this is this this I I I like, you know. Mm. Yeah, but we had all the air conditioning on in here. You've probably had your air conditioners on. It's on right now. You know, and uh, uh, we <coughs> we're keeping them on in two rooms, so they keep the they keep the mm-hmm. whole back of the house uh, cold, uh, cool, or cool enough, mm-hmm. and. Um, I, we just forget the living room and the dining room and the kitchen. You know, we don't really go out there that much because that's just pure humidity. 
Now we, you, you know, we and, and the problem is, we used to have uh, uh, air conditioners in those windows as well. But when we stopped doing this whole deal uh, with, uh, you know, when the guy who was renting it to us uh, finally made a deal with us to move out and turn the apartment over to us, he came and got all his air conditioners. <laughs> and, and we never turn the ones on in the living room and, and dining room anyway. And the reason is, is that we can't turn on more than a certain amount of air conditioners at once or we blow a fuse downstairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, because this place is so badly wired, <clears throat> you know. So we have to be very careful about that. So we just pretty much during the summer when it's hot, we live in the back rooms, you know. Uh, well, you're in an antique building if you think about it well yeah it is an antique building yeah so anyway you know but when it was built it didn't have any water huh uh, when when that when that house was built mm -hmm. they didn't have air conditioning well no of course they're not if this was what 1900 you know but what it did have okay is uh, for instance up here I can't show it to people but like there there's the door and then above it is a window that used to be able to open mm -hmm. you know so what you would do is you had all these windows above all the doorways that would open, open. yeah they would vent yeah. uh, and uh, then you had a lot of windows so you open up all the windows and you got a you know you got a lot of air flowing through so that was the form of air conditioning in those days, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, then as years went on, of course, they started putting in air conditioners, and, mm -hmm. you know. But th this uh, this house, apartment house, I mean, I would love to restore this apartment, but I'm not going to do anything to restore it because, uh, I, you know, I don't want to do anything that's going to benefit the landlord, you know. So I, I don't own it, you know, so why should I, fi why should I fix it up? You know, uh, the only thing I'll do occasionally is do things that make it easier to live here, but that's about it. You know, and the place looks fine. You know, it, it, it it's a little, a little, uh, there are things I would have done, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. varnishing and, you know, uh, uh, redoing the floors mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do it because I don't own the place. Yeah. Plus, these landlords I've got are really, you know, they're, they're amazing. You know, we had a, we had a, I'm, I'm going to tell this story. I don't care because the world should <laughs> know about this. Um, two years ago, we made a deal. And, and uh, the deal was that whatever the judge felt was equitable for this apartment, we would, we would all abide by. So um, he said the apartment had to be returned back to its 2003 uh, price which was, believe it or not, $500.07 a month. So they wanted to keep charging us the 2225 they said was the rent stabilized rent. And we said, no, the judge said otherwise. And they said, well, we're going to appeal this thing. Well, he said, if you appeal it and you win the appeal, you know, in, uh, uh, in, in what do they call it, uh, the appell appellate court, uh, we'll abide by that, okay? So we started paying the $507 a month. They went and they appealed it, and the appellate court said, screw you, we're sending it back to the original court and saying that that's the way it should be, okay? So what does that mean? That means our rent is at $500.07 for the first two years. Then when we go to the next two years, they can charge us a certain percentage to raise the red rent, mm -hmm. which I think at uh, two years, if you rent for two years, it's like 5%, all right, which means $25 more a month. Fine, yeah. we don't mind that. So you have to get a, uh, uh, a renewal uh, at least 90 days before the renewal time, which ours is <clears throat> November 1st. Well, we get a notice today, and the rent, the landlord wants to charge us the two thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Uh-uh, that's not. They can't read, huh? They can't read. Well, they're just being stubborn. 
you know, and so I had to get my lawyer on it. Ka-ching. And the lawyer wrote him a letter and said, hey, you know, you're fraudulently sending out this notice. It's a fraudulent notice. It, 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 the renewal rate, it, it, you, have to, you have to go by what the judge said, okay? It was not only settled by the judge, but then it was reaffirmed by the appellate court. So you're stuck, uh, you know, with, with that. And uh, they, uh, they went, uh, what? Uh, you know, so I mean, so my lawyer sent him a letter, a really nasty letter, and said, you better do something about this, because, you know, this is not what the rent is supposed to be. That's not what the judge said. And, uh, you know, but they'll try anything they can. You know, and I knew that when this renewal came up, they were going to try and charge us that. And they probably figure by this time I don't have a lawyer anymore or whatever, but I still have the same lawyer. And he, so he sent him a letter and he told him, he said, and we will do whatever it takes to get justice for our client, for my client. Uh, so, you know, that's... So you just need to keep a copy of that letter so every time they try to do that each year and you can just copy it, send it to them and you don't have to worry about paying the lawyer. Well, who knows, who knows how often uh, this is going to happen. You know, I mean, oh, they'll probably try it every damn year. Or and every and two how years much or are they going to fight this this time? You know, uh, it, it, I mean, they have no case. Yeah. They have absolutely no case whatsoever. But you know, I mean, it still winds up costing me money. So I mean, it just it just that's what I mean. Yeah. Keep a copy of that letter and change the date on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, oh, I bet they try this every two years. Oh yeah, I'll bet they try it every mm -hmm. two years. And I don't know what they're going to do, but, you know, we have 60 days to tell them whether we're going to renew the lease or not. Otherwise, they can either evict us or do nothing. Uh, and I'm sure my lawyer, since he's on the case, will we're not going to get kicked out of this place. And mm -hmm. he's going to make sure that, you know, he, he just said to them, your, your renewal is completely fraudulent. You know, so here we go again. You know, it never ends. You know, you say you're so lucky to live in this apartment and getting it at the rate you get it at, but I got to tell you, we're fighting for every inch of it. You know? And, um, uh, but th this is what happens when you, you know, these guys, when they bought this place, uh, basically they bought it for nothing. They bought, I think, $150,000 plus they had to pay $150,000 in back taxes. They bought this entire apartment house for $300,000. Yeah. Well, what kind of landlord looks for a place in Harlem that's over almost 100 years old that's uh, only $300,000? They call them oh slumlords. <laughs> you know? yeah. And yeah. that's what they were back then. I'm not saying that's what they are <clears throat> now. Uh, but uh, the fact is that I don't think they ever got used to the fact that, you know, as time has gone on and this property has become a very uh, uh, decent property or a great property to have and that people want to move into, that they've got to be better landlords. No, they're treating, treating it the same way they did when they bought it for $300,000. So that's what happens, you know. Uh, and... Uh, they want to move somebody in and charge them five or six grand a month. Oh, that was five or six yeah. grand. This place, at least. this place, if they fix it up, or, they would do a yeah, little or, fix up, would go it. for about eight thousand, nine thousand dollars a month because mm -hmm. the view is the most extraordinary view almost in the whole building. In fact, it is the most extraordinary view yeah, in the whole you got building. That. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in fact, you can see the view outside my window. You know that that is a real view. I didn't. Photoshop New York City in back of me, you know. <laughs> so um, that that's uh, you know. But I mean, it just it just never stops. You know, we went through this whole thing, and they've never really admitted that that's what the rent is supposed to be. They they keep sending me a bill every month for the for the rental, and it's for two thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars minus a certain amount of money to bring it down to five hundred dollars. And seven cents. Oh, is that how they bill you? Yeah, that's how they bill me. And <laughs> oh, so they're trying to make you give you a guilt trip. He, on and top he, of it. No, and he said, he said to them, "You've been billing uh, Mr. Schwarzman and Ms. Miller all wrong, you know, and and now you're being fraudulent in the 
price that you gave the DHCR, which is the place you register your rents, and uh, you're being fraudulent and whatever in your assumption that he owes that much money now in rent because he doesn't. And uh, and he listed the uh, you know the the judge's determination on it, and what the name of the case number was, and all of that. Mm -hmm. and just said, you better just you know send us a so different... the way he's writing it up to you he's probably claiming it some kind of a loss on his tax well or no something. if that's what he were doing fine but there's <laughs> nothing there that says you're gonna have to pay this much money and then less such and such amount no yeah, yeah. they're saying no now you owe this much money plus the raise plus you got to pay the uh, uh, well that's not that's not coming every month that's just what he's saying this time for renewal yeah, and he oh, wants to renew oh, yeah. it at, uh, I can't remember the amount, it's the 2225 plus, I think, 5%. Okay, I, I thought he years. was sending you every every month, he was sending you a you know $4,000 bill. Oh, no, he, every month 4, he, no, every month he was sending us a bill for $2,225, minus then, a certain amount to bring the price down to $500.07. That's false billing. Of course it's false billing. Now, if you <laughs> say to me, well, maybe he did it because they want to take the loss, okay, you know. I'm, yeah, but, but that's uh, not really not really what's happening. Right. I mean, we did pay because the... Because there's a court order on it, yeah. Yeah, you know. I mean, they just better get used to the idea mm -hmm. that until both Marjorie and I drop dead, this place <laughs> goes for... Well, it'll go up to 600 or whatever once they keep adding the 5% every every two years you know yeah. uh but uh, uh you know come on just Talk to them. yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's amazing that they that they that they still mm -hmm. refuse to accept the fact that they lost the case in court mm -hmm. you know he came into the rent board sounds familiar doesn't it what it sounds familiar doesn't it the, yeah certain <laughs> a certain uh ex-president yeah 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 i mean it's, it, it, what? And you turn them into the rent board uh, and say, look, the guy's trying to establish a $2,025. Phil, Phil, I pay a lawyer money to do this for me. Yeah. So he well, does whatever it takes. Right. And in this case, it'll probably be more like going to the judge and having him send them an order that if they don't comply, there'll be, there'll be fines or there'll be some jail time or something. I think they're trying to establish a rental price on the property. No, they're, they're not, they're, no they're refusing to accept that they lost the, the case, uh, you know, uh, and, and they've continued to refuse so by billing me every month for that full amount minus a credit that brings it down to $500.07 a month. But they don't want to do that this time. This time they want, they want me uh, for a uh, deposit to now send them something like two thousand dollars to fill out the deposit from the five hundred they already have as a deposit, you know. Also, there's a law in New York City, okay, that they have to renew the lease on the terms and conditions of the previous lease. All right, the Pretty terms true. and the terms and conditions of the previous lease were that the rent was five hundred dollars and seven cents a month. Yeah, are they in? breach of the uh, the judge's judgment yes <laughs> no question about it it's uh, you know there uh, 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 you know as, as my uh, lawyer wrote to them you're being fraudulent and you're being uh, whatever I don't know he named a couple other th terms and he <laughs> said I'll, I'll take whatever recourse I have to do to, because you have no case here you know, this is the way the case is. This was the judgment, and you have to live by it. You know, so. But they, you know, what they do is they just do. They they're all like Trump. You know, <laughs> they'll just keep kicking the can down the road, and they can kick it all they want to. But the fact is that I think even if we, let's say we both drop dead tomorrow, uh, I don't think they can raise the rate higher than that anyway because that's what the rent has been established for this apartment. The only thing they can do in order to get a lot of money is uh, is is make improvements and then claim 
based on those improvements that they can get so much more, right? <coughs> but otherwise, that's the established price of this apartment, or the starting price, okay? Because every two years, they get to raise the rent by about 5%. But, uh, you know, I mean, we have recourse, obviously. We have the law on our side, you know, but it's a matter of just fighting them on this thing. How much justice can you afford? I can afford a lot now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, because I, I've come into a bit of money. Okay? Very nice. You know, so I, and not yet, I'm waiting to, for it to go, all go through the process and so on. But uh, uh, enough that I could keep fighting them for the next 20 years, okay? <laughs> you know, so I mean, I, but I, I don't want to have to do that. I want them to live by the decision. They went to court, they lost, now live with it, you know? Uh, and, and you can't just say, well, I'm sorry, I don't agree with it, you know? So, it, 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 whatever. So, my lawyer sent him a really nasty nasty letter and we'll see what happens you know and he was right on the case as soon as he saw this thing he said that's it you're absolutely right he said there there's the, the he said as he put it that that rental is written in stone mm -hmm. okay there's nothing they can do about it and the retainer is hmm how much of a retainer did uh, it cost to go at this point I just or, get a bill from him you know yeah. I mean, come on I've given him hundred and ten thousand dollars so far over this long period of time uh, he knows I'm good for the money okay <laughs> and hopefully hopefully the letter will just do it and they'll just say okay you know uh, we're not gonna fight it but if they want to fight it they, they've got no nothing to fight we just go I think to the judge or whatever and say Here's the judgment. They're not living up to it. Tell them they have to, you know. So, you know, I mean, I just, I, it, 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 it's, it's just not nice on their part, you know. I played fair with them. They should pay, play fair with me. You know? Yeah. So, but that's, uh, that's my, that's, it, and I'm sure this will go on for the rest of my life as long as I live in this apartment. Okay. And I'm just going to have to expect it, you know, and that we just have to put our foot down now, and maybe that will last for a while. Two years, huh? Two, two years. years, yeah, two years, <laughs> you know. But uh, no, they 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 misrepresented how much we owe. Okay, that's it, plain and simple. So, anyway, yeah. So, welcome to the wonderful world of New York rentals and landlords and you know what I'm talking about Charlene Alex you're a true New Yorker <laughs> yeah. you're, defending, you're defending your homestead yeah, that's well, how you have to be yeah be well I you know there may be 20 other people in this building who have cases against this landlord okay oh really stand your ground yeah and they just I think they have the feeling that if they just uh, play the bully eventually people will give up because they can't afford it you know and uh, um, and I know people who have actually won cases against them and then they cares like we have to had to go back into court to get them to live by their agreements you know I mean it's, it's uh, but that's the way some landlords operate and this is not unusual I'm not saying these guys are unusual I've heard that happen with a particular uh, retirement home Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 They bully you into the end of the, into the end of the retirements and everything else, and then, and then when you you pass away, they start hitting you with all this stuff, and they you know, it's it's ridiculous. Right. Right. And uh, you know, I mean, it it uh, I, I I imagine I will be dealing with this every couple of years. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they'll this time will prevail and. You know, I mean, there's nothing to prevail. We have the law on our side. There's, they have no argument. They have absolutely yeah. none whatsoever. 
they'll just keep trying and see if you slip up or whatever is what they do. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we yeah. make sure our rent goes out every month, you know, and they yep. get it on time, yep. and, you know. And there was some amount that was uh, an overcharge, but we paid it anyway just to be able to not have them say we yeah. had, an, uh, you know, we were in arrears. Yeah. I mean, right now we're in arrears for 60 cents because they charged us a interest payment on the money that they said we owed that we didn't. So you send them two quarters and a dime in an envelope yeah, and say, here's your money. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, gets, it, gets, it gets ridiculous, you know, it gets absolutely ridiculous. So yeah. anyway, I mean, uh, that's, that's my problems. And I wasn't going to even mention it tonight, but to hell with it, you know, I've got the law on my side. And, uh, you know, I mean, we went to court, we got a decision. They went to appeals court and appealed it, and they lost the appeal, and it was sent back to the original uh, 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 yeah. judge's uh, determination. And uh, that's the way it was. You know, <clears throat> they have no more case. Unless they think they do, which they don't. There's, no, there's nothing they can really do at this point. So how are you guys all doing? How are you doing, Charlene? We haven't seen you in a while. Eh, I'm surviving here. <laughs> what do you mean, eh? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I still don't like being in this part of New Jersey, but there's nothing I can do. I'm stuck. You don't like being in New Jersey? This part, it's very boring here. I mean, the big thing now is, you know, there's beautiful birds. and I don't know, we're being uh, inundated by ants and spiders and because there's so much rain. Yeah. And there's so much grass and trees that there's a lot of insects. You How's know? the heat over there? It's pretty bad, right? Oh, God. I, it's killing me. It's the dog days of, like, August in July, right? It's, like, crazy. And the, we still have to live through the dog days of August. it's the dog days of August in yeah. August. This is August, isn't it? Well, July. August. July. 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 But it's been bad all July. Very hot and humid, I think. Yeah. But uh, this is... Uh, Oh, this is July, isn't it? Yeah. I just remember we're just about going into August. Yeah. Next right. Tuesday, yeah. Let's that, hope it's not bad in August. I, like I've, I've, I've hardly gone out at all. I went out yesterday with Marjorie to go to the Apple store because her iPad froze. And uh, that's the most I've been out because I, it's, not, it's too hot out there. Yep. Yeah. You know? Did you see that article that said that Apple was the worst place to work, and mm -hmm. um, uh, that that they only retain their employees for a very short period of time? No, it's uh, probably Apple's place. <laughs> where did you read that? Uh, it could have been uh, um, Microsoft News. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, 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 it comes on my phone in the morning. So you should, you um, didn't send me that article. I would have read that film. I would have found the see, I mean, you, you see, don't read you anything see, I send you. you. I don't read it. You talk a big game, but you don't read it. I do read it. Well, I never I read anything he sends me. But anyway, uh, the fact you is... Read stuff uh, on the, uh, uh, let me put it this way. I've heard, I've heard the opposite. You know, every time I've been to the Apple store, the people there have been... Really, in fact, I mentioned to Marjorie, you know, where a lot of companies are going to hell in a handbasket, Apple seems to maintain uh, its quality of service. And uh, when you go down there, the people are all very nice and very accommodating, and they don't look like people who aren't getting paid well. Okay? Um, I believe they all have medical insurance. You, you know? A very good medical plan. I've heard nothing but positive things about Apple. See if I can find the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, now he's going. At least we're keeping him busy looking for something so we can talk with each other. Uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was horrible. Huh? <clears throat> it was so hot today. I was. Well, I went to drop some boxes over the post office, Alex. I had to come right back. I had a the heat. You couldn't. The air was so. I had to take. I actually had a sinus headache. I had to like take an apple when I got in. My really? brother tried to call me. It said that it was just so thick, the like you couldn't breathe. Yeah. What were you going to say, Charlene? Well, you talked about apple. You know, Alex, 
you know, you're a lot more techy than I am, I guess, or something. But mm. in New Jersey, I have awful experience. Like they tell me, when I get in there, I explain something to them and they say, you know what you're going to do? You're going to go home and you're going to, they'll schedule a call for me. And mm. I have to go home and like take the call or like call from my home. They give me a runaround that well, I Well, no, I'm no, no, you know, the, I think you have to make an appointment with their so-called geniuses. Right. The genius board. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that you have to do. Marjorie did that, and she got, a, got in the next day. And we went down there, and they were ready to see us when we got there, you know. Well, I get in so much trouble. I had one of the young female geniuses wipe out all my music or something, and I could, I, I just, you know, I didn't want to argue, so I just left. But I've gotten better with Apple Music now, but I had to make a whole new playlist. You know, I, I found them to be, you know, if you make an appointment, I found them to be very good. I found them that's to be terrific. That's what it was, Alex. I just walked in, so that's why they got me. Like, I bought this this uh, this uh, trash can, Apple, <laughs> and uh, the thing about two months after I got it, because I bought it on, uh, the only thing I ever bought on, uh, what do you call it, uh, eBay. Uh, and uh, it went bad. So I went down to the Apple store and they said, well, of course you don't have any warranty on this, but we're going to fix it for you, okay? So they fixed it and they said it'll be $500. So I paid them the 500 bucks. Go home. Thing isn't working. It stops working, like really fast. Same problem, everything. I went back with it. They sent it down to Texas. And when it came back, I said, how much do I owe you? And they said, nothing. We have a policy here at Apple that if we say it's going to cost you a certain amount of money, okay, uh, and uh, we don't fix it, then we keep fixing it until it's fixed and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, this thing had to go back down to Texas twice. And by the time I was through, they replaced almost every part inside that computer. And I had almost like a brand new computer, okay? Mm -hmm. And it cost me 500 bucks. So, you know, that, I, I like Apple because they do live by their, their word. You know, if we tell you it's been fixed, then it's fixed. And if it's not fixed, then we'll continue working on it till it is fixed and you don't owe us another penny. So, Phil's still looking for the article, <laughs> you know, because he's got to prove us wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll be, he, it's good. It's keeping him busy. It's keeping him busy. busy. He's got his castle on. Tiny right? object. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Tiny object. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, 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 I, I always, I'm, so I, I've always been very happy with Apple's service, you know. I mean, I don't. I I kind of don't like the genius bar because what makes them geniuses? You know, we throw words around these days uh, rather yeah. f fragrant, fra flagrantly, fragrantly, flagrantly. Uh, we throw them around, and the fact is that you know um, uh, those guys are geniuses. And that's going to be a lot of news to Albert Einstein. <laughs> you, know, you know, that really cheapens, serve, cheapens the term genius. What? If they, if they serve wine at the genius bar, maybe it would be a good thing. Well, it's two things that are wrong. They're not geniuses, and it isn't a bar. Right. Mm. You know, uh, they don't serve alcohol there. Well, have you found it yet, Phil? Uh, no. <laughs> but I, I saw it this morning. Huh? And it was definitely on the uh, Microsoft start up, <laughs> you, know, the, you know, start your day with news. Uh, and so Microsoft is saying how people at Apple are underpaid and they don't well, let them unhappy. Well, the, art yeah. the article, no, this just happens to be the, uh, the uh, system that delivered the news, but the, uh, they also said Meta and uh, Tesla and all the big ones were... Uh, Having big, uh, uh, a lot of employee turnover. And then it had a little application link at the bottom for Microsoft. Yeah. Come work here. Oh, well, no. <laughs> application. Yeah. Well, the question is how many people did Microsoft lay off? 
And how many uh, people did, uh, did uh, uh, I mean, everybody's laying people off like crazy. You know, rather so, than deciding how they're going to work with the with the uh, you know with the work worker count that they have currently, and not fire anybody, and just try and improve their business. And you know, the reason they're the reason they're they're firing people is not because they're going broke. It's just because they're not making enough money, and that's the reason they're the firing case. people. What? It's always the case. Yeah. And I mean, it's terrible. It's just they, terrible. They lay off for their margins for their stockholders. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the Jay Leno, because I've been watching uh, Jay Leno in his garage for yeah. his cars, mm -hmm. uh, he, he had an interview and he was asked, you know, uh, you know, what was the satisfaction with the people who work for you? And he said that uh, the, uh, the show, uh, you know, the producers wanted to lay off uh, half the staff uh, on his show. I guess he had about 90 people. Mm -hmm. And he would play off half of them. And he said, you know, I'm making $30 million a year. He says, cut my pay. He was. He's not making $30 million he a was. year. He was at the t at the right. Tonight and Show. At, at the, right. And no, at and the he time. wasn't, excuse me, he wasn't making $30 million. He was making $15 million. Yeah, because he asked them to cut his pay in half and keep all the employees on. Hmm. So, uh, so he at the time when they were going to lay off half half the uh, employees at the Tonight Show, he said, "Cut me in half." He says, I, "You know, it's just me and my wife. I don't need thirty million dollars a year. I can live pretty comfortably." He said, "On fifteen, but keep everybody," and they did. You know, so I oh, what a good guy Jay Leno is! I thought that was a pretty good thing. No, I mean, yeah, I'll, tell some, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. There are stories about Letterman and his philanthropy and all the things that he's done. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, let me finish something. Let me finish something. And somehow, Dave never says a word about it because his philanthropy is quiet. Well, you Jay's know. My pretty quiet too no, no he managed to tell you you know no, and, his li and his li podcast. and his listeners that he you know look at what i did for my from the people who work for me he didn't say it like that he just said hey it, you know he didn't want to see these people laid off he says you know how much money do we need to save he says cut my pay in half i i thought that was a pretty uh, uh good, a righteous thing to do mm -hmm. okay you know, yeah. But hey, not like you would give him any credit. What? No, not not at all. I I, I think that Jay actually uh, over the years has turned out to be kind of skeezy. You know. Well, I don't know. I think he's uh, probably you know I like his car thing. Well, I like the car show too. That doesn't mean that I can't still think he's skeezy. Yeah. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, maybe they're all skeezy because I thought Letterman was. No, Letterman. Letterman was a class act, and what he did, I you know, I could tell you about things he did during 9/11 that would just make you be in awe of him. Okay, yeah. and and the way in which he helped certain people during that period of time, uh, you know, and and that he he he's been very very philanthropic over the years, but doesn't want people to know the money he gives because he doesn't want that to be uh, anything that he brags about. Okay, so he just does it. And he also tells people, listen, I'm giving you this money to help you out in this way, shape or form or whatever, but if you ever tell anybody, that's the last penny you get from me. Well, uh, even Trump was quite philanthropic during oh, bullshit. Uh, times. Bullshit. And the reason I know bullshit. is because Rudy Giuliani, oh. who I had, I was one of the people that had lunch with him. Oh, good. Uh, you know, it told the story uh, of uh, what he did. And, uh, you know, he, mm. he was actually very generous. Oh, yeah. I believe every word coming out of Rudy Giuliani's mouth. Well, hey. <laughs> Didn't he tell the uh, Georgia people that he... Um, oh, finally. Finally, yeah, after they did. had their lives threatened and they couldn't come out of the house because of Rudy Giuliani's assessment of what they supposedly had done. Yeah. 
Yeah, really um, nice, Ju Rudy. Thank you for finally apologizing, you jerk. Hey, uh, did you hear what the deal was, why they struck down the uh, Hunter Biden uh, plea deal? Well, because, number one, the judge is a Trump appointee. No, did you hear about the clause that was in there giving uh, Biden uh, total uh, immunity from any further prosecution? Well, I didn't know that, but I would say that would be in there. Yes, you don't. Well, you don't. It snuck it. Wait in a there. minute. Wait a minute. You didn't sneak it in there. What happened is when you say you're going to, you're going to say you did what you did, okay, and that you're going to plead uh, uh, no contest, as it were. The part of the deal is, is that that's the end of it. No, but that was the unprecedented thing that they were talking about. And that's, his, not, that's and, not unprecedented, Phil. Uh, yes. What they, According what they to this to. judge who is a Trump appointee, who like all Trump appointees, didn't have, doesn't have any real major experience, you know, I mean, they, they come up with that. Oh, this has never been done before. Of course, it's done all the time. If you're going to oh. sign something that says, it, I will plead guilty uh, and I will pay the fine. Well, Obviously, you don't know the whole story, no. and you're just taking the party line. No, I don't know the whole story because I don't watch Fox. Well, and maybe that's the only place you're going to get the truth. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, and if and if you yeah did, yeah the truth the truth uh, let's see what did they have to pay for their truth I think it was how many billions of dollars to that uh, to Dominion hey, uh, because the of their truth because of their so-called truth. Oh, uh, because of uh, the voting machines? Yeah, uh, that, that little yeah. lie well, they kept we're, perpetrating? What we're talking about is their reporting. Does that mean because they had one error here that everything one, they reported one, is wrong? They were reporting well, everything Rudy Giuliani was saying, and that included all his uh, 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 assertions Rudy of what Giuliani. was going on in... in, in yeah, oh, here we go. Oh, again Rudy tonight. Giuliani is supposed to here be. Here we go. A He's source. monopolizing the conversation again. Uh, I, you know, hey, I can't help it if you're if you're not uh, well versed in. Uh, oh, I see. I'm not well versed. Yeah, I'm in, not well versed. Tucker Carlson was barfing the stuff every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I, I gave you the reason why they struck down the deal. And give us your reason. No, and it wasn't struck down. She just said, you're going to have to come back and plead it some more with me well, and show me why I should go along with this. Well, no, she, she asked, is, is this precedent? Is there precedent for this, uh, for this issue? And they, um, both the defense and the Department of Justice, said, no, there isn't. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so the deal is struck down. Now now Biden has... Well, now there is a precedent. Pled, no, Biden has now pled not guilty. The original no, deal... No, he didn't plead, plead oh, guilty. He, well, he's not going to plead guilty unless right. he so, gets he gets the deal. Gets his deal. Yeah. So now he's pled not guilty, and now there'll be a trial. Yeah, okay. All right. So, you know, so, but he... I don't I, see there's going to be any more plea deal. You know, he already paid the uh, he already paid the taxes. You know, he he uh, made good on that. So I'm sure Helmsley did too. He was in jail. No, Helmsley didn't. As a matter of fact, uh, yes, uh, Tony. But the only on the Hunter Biden thing, did you, let me ask, I'll leave Phil out of this. The Hunter Biden. The let, let's face group. it. To begin with, because I, mean, I know his opinion. The Hunter. Wait a minute. The Hunter Biden deal is a um, uh, a case of. Uh, of uh, what about ism? In other no, words, but it's, 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 it, they're they're making a big deal out of Hunter Biden because it's what about Hunter Biden? Now here's a question though. This was what I was asking though. Yeah. The whole group, other than Phil, you don't find it a little alarming that he doesn't claim taxes on almost two million dollars? No, I find that quite alarming, and he's been caught doing it, and he said, "Okay, I admit to it. I'm paying," and he paid off the taxes. Okay, he paid them off. All right, so. Uh, uh, what 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 did he do wrong now? But I think you know? it's kind of a reflection on on Biden himself. No, it's not a reflection on Biden. It's, it's a reflection. It's a reflection on it's a ref Hunter Biden. It's a reflection. Kevin, Kevin, it's, it's a, a reflection it, on it, Paul Tony. 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 It's a reflection on Hunter Biden and Hunter it, Biden. It, oh, it, no, but here's a question: You don't hey, think hey, you throw hey, the hold, little hold, shade hold, on the president? Tony, That's listen to me, Tony. We cannot let him talk. No, I'm listen to me talk. The fact is that it is not a reflection on. 
It's, that's your opinion. It, no, it, that's your opinion. You don't know what my opinion is yet. You haven't let I'm me say it. I'm trying to get out the rest of my point, though. You just interrupted me. Finish it. What I'm trying finish to say it. is... Just finish it. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm losing track. To me, I don't care what anybody's opinion is. This is my opinion. And Kevin, you could say whatever you want, but my well, father would have told me, I'm raised the right way. You're a reflection on your parents. That's a reflection on, you don't hide, oh, I forgot to pay taxes on $2 million. That's just, he's hiding something. Do you think everybody's that stupid? Well, and I guess what Trump's doing is a reflection on his father. This has nothing what to do about with him. This has nothing to do with Trump. I don't care. No, no. The fact is, it has nothing. To, it has nothing to do with Biden. Hunter Biden's acts are Hunter Biden's acts, and and he he did something wrong, and you can't blame that on his father. I'm sure if his if he'd gone to his father and said, "I'm doing this with my taxes," his father would have said, "Pay the damn taxes." You know. Hey, That's your opinion. I'll respect your opinion. No, it's not agree. my opinion. It's fact. Well, I don't agree with it. I think no, no, no. well, you cannot had, agree think, with it, but it's fact. When mobsters don't pay their taxes, there's a reason why. They're you know mobsters. Because they, they don't want you to know where they're making their money. They're mobsters. That's why. No. Yeah. And that's the Biden crime family. That's the Trump crime family too. Hey, what about ism again? No. You fits where it. By the I, way, well, in reality, if he gets caught and he and he. And he's the only reason why he's doing he it, should go to jail too. You know, the only reason why this is coming to light because his father's the president now, and it's catching no, up. No, the him. only reason everybody's going after him at this point. Wait a minute, hold on a second. And Fox is on the case every day of the week is because he is Biden's son, and because they well, want to make Biden so. look good, bad, not How for any other Congress? reason. If he wasn't Biden's son, he might have gotten away with this tax fraud. If, if, if he, he wasn't was Biden's, Biden's son, he's son he's dead, wait a minute. If he wasn't Biden's son, he would never have gotten that money. He would be, uh, that's exactly it, yeah. Well, okay. What does he really wreck? He has no All right. ability enough, to Tony. Make enough, Tony. He's a crack addict. Enough, Tony. Of course he's a, I, he was a crack addict. Yes. Don't you feel sorry? Don't you feel, so, don't you feel sorry? Don't you feel sorry? Don't you feel sorry for the guy that he had a drug no, problem? No, because he's got a well, silver spoon. Fuck you, on his Phil, because you don't have you don't have a you don't have, a, you don't have a single decent like decent bone in your body if you don't feel sorry for somebody I, who has a drug problem. It, well, that, I don't know what he has. That's, that's your opinion. I don't know if he has a drug problem. All I yes, know is it's I can't my it's my it's my opinion. Okay, yeah. and I'm right and you're wrong. Uh, uh, Kevin. I pay my taxes and he doesn't, uh, okay. so he stinks. Uh, yeah, okay. You don't have to worry about paying very much taxes. Okay. Yeah, how do you know? You know, my finances, because I don't know where you can live for $500 in Queens, because it ain't my apartment. It's 2400 You didn't rent it either. <laughs> it's still empty. That's cool. Yeah, I go to 500 Hello. Uh, yeah, wait, wait a minute. I want to hear from Kevin. So would you two people just shut the fuck up okay yes uh um the bottom to line is he's going to trial and if he gets caught and he gets prosecuted he's going to go to jail and mm -hmm. that's the way it should be period period yeah. his father, and it has no reflection on his father so what if he he well, did it. her opinion well it's my opinion i'm just saying yeah. that that's the law as well it, yeah. just because he did it doesn't mean his dad that's should mine. go to jail am you i know, wrong congress is investigating uh, did i ask a question yeah, if he, if he did it, does it mean his father should go to jail? Yeah. I didn't say does. Okay. <laughs> so if your son goes out and bad. murders somebody who puts you in jail, that's fair? Because, because what they're what they're alleging is that Biden was just as okay. complicit as the keyword like you, I'd like key word if, you made there was alleging. I'd like to hear if Brian, who also called, might have anything to say. Brian? Uh, yeah, I just like to say, Ke uh, Kevin, thank you for warning me. Phil was on because I could only handle about ten minutes a night from him, so that's why I called in late. Oh, you're <laughs> and then with Tony like that, man, maybe I got to call him later. Well, uh, he, 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 Tony, I'll send you my taxes, Phil. Nothing wrong with having an opinion. It's just you know, don't get upset about it. I'm not having an opinion, and I'm I'm just. I, also not, I'm not I don't think it's any reflection on. On your father, Bullshit. if your son did something wrong. Bullshit. Okay. Everybody's getting demonetized. <laughs> That's right. Hi, Charlene. Charlene. Checks in the mail. Yes, Just Charlene. Hi. <laughs> you have anything to say, Charlene? Well, you know, it kind of looks like they're trying to get back 
at the Dems the way, like, you know, they're, they're trying to prosecute Trump. So now they say, oh, well, let's go after, you know, this Hunter Biden thing, and they won't let it go. They're trying to make, you know, voters think that he's got, like, a lot of crap going on in his family that's not good. And, you know, if you're really smart, which I hate, yeah, I'm not a Trumper, you know, there's a big difference between what Trump is being, try, you know, what they're trying him on and a big difference in, you know, Hunter Biden's it, it, case. Isn't Trump's I mean, son-in-law having problems now? Yeah. Yeah. Like the $2, million, $2 billion they made from the Chinese. So did Hunter and, uh, you know. So, uh, I mean, it, what about I think, his, I what think about his, Biden oh, is compromised. Okay. And uh, I, I, I President can't. Biden. Oh, and Trump Trump. isn't. And Trump no. isn't. Well, he's not the president right well, now. Well, he's going to be running for president. He's it gonna doesn't be matter. Your, he's going to be your nominee. Yeah. So, I mean, how, uh, you know, Trump, Trump a, guy, a guy, if he runs for office, by the time he runs for office, he will have four felony charges against him. I mean, four different cases. More than that, something like 20 or 30 or 40 case you know charges against him i mean they just yeah. added some more charges in the in the mar-a-lago i know that, thing. that the kentucky fried chicken menus that he had that said top seat <clears throat> on it uh he's being prosecuted for those too mm -hmm. you know yeah okay really well that's just, this is nothing but a witch hunt oh it's when phil's in the corner he jokes no, no it's, it's a yeah, witch hunt yeah oh it's a witch or it says witch hunt yeah. it is mm-hmm yeah. Yeah. You don't believe that maybe and there's a possibility opinion, that Trump is a major crook? No, I don't think he is. You don't think that for years people in New York City have known he was a major crook? I think New York City is a tough place to do business. Jeff is agreeing, agreeing with me on that. <laughs> right? He's a crook. Yeah. It's a tough place. Let me put to it this way. I have a dear friend who was, her boyfriend was Bernard Carrick. Yeah. And I said to her, I said, were they corrupt? And she says, are you kidding me? Well, two, of the most two, two, two of the most corrupt people, she and Giuliani, two of the most corrupt people that she's ever had to deal with. Because Giuliani took down the mob when, uh, when he was U.S. attorney, and uh, he cleaned up the city. So how, how corrupt could he be? He was a good mayor. Very he corrupt. He used yeah. that as his as his cachet to be able to go in and steal people blind. Well, you know. Tony, do you think he was a crook in uh, New York? Who, me? Yeah. I lived in New York, and I know you weren't here living here at the time, Alex, and I can tell you right now, at the end of uh, Kachi's run, you had a crack, crack epidemic. The mob oh, was yeah. all over the place. He did clean that up, and I lived here. Unless you say, I know it was better than else, right? I mean, yeah, I lived here. Charlene, Sh Charlene. I just want to say I lived, you know, in the Alphabet City, Lois mm -hmm. Ida, yeah. and it was drug ridden and crack infested. Yeah. And I don't know, but uh, I could say that I guess he did clean it up so that, Okay. You know, well, listen, listen. I, I, I just, I just the, looked. I just looked. I got to run the theme. I, I got to get out of here. Oh, it's time to go. Again. Yeah, it's time to go. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Cool. Kevin, thank you for giving a moment of respectability to the whole thing. Charlene, thank you. Good to see you again. Uh, 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 <clears throat> oh, boy, I'm, I'm forgetting his name now. Phil, thank you so much for yeah. joining us tonight. Uh, I'll Tony, loan him the cuffs. Tony, thank you, and thank you to, uh, to uh, Brian for having joined us as well. Uh, boy, uh, two, two exhausting nights. All right. Anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There they go. Oh, boy. Anyway, that's it for tonight. <laughs> it's just been, it's too much, too much. Anyway, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night, final show of the week. Uh, uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime... As always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody.